Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I hope you're all doing well. And if you're a new viewer, welcome to Pie in the Sky Tours. In today's video, I'll be showing you my best and most recent VR settings for Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 using the HP Reverb G2. I'll also go through the other settings I use to get the best VR experience possible on my PC. After more testing, I can confirm these are my latest and best settings. The reason for the update is because I'm now using the OpenXR Toolkit, which has led me to change some other graphic settings in my setup. Since that video, quite a few people have been asking me to do an updated settings video. So here it is, and I hope it helps. I have had some significant time with the OpenXR Toolkit, and these are my confirmed best settings so far. You can see I'm flying Aerosoft's new Twin Otter over Mexico City, which looks great, and is very well modeled by Flymax. I highly recommend both these products, and we'll leave links in the video description. There is an update for the Twin Otter which improves the sound amongst other fixes, so be sure to download that too if you've already got it. I also want to let you know that the OpenXR Toolkit has now been updated to work with AMD cards as well. There were some problems with scrambled lettering and menus with the build from yesterday, and people couldn't run it. But if you have already downloaded it and are using it with an NVIDIA card, there's no need to do any updating. This is only for AMD users. A fix for the Vario Aero is in the works, which will be good news for Aero owners once it's ready, so stay tuned for news about that soon. Remember, this video is based on my PC, which is a 3080 GPU and an i9-10900K processor. If you have a 1000 or 2000 series card, I suggest you follow my settings, but turn each setting down slightly and see how it runs. I am choosing not to include any FPS readings or extensive testing in this video, but I will do some demos in future videos. As always, these are the settings that I prefer most, so this is subjective. I understand that some people prefer to use motion reprojection, and some like to push the graphics harder, which is all good if that's what you like. The idea is that you watch this video and have a benchmark and starting point to dial your own setup for the best VR experience in Microsoft Flight Simulator using the HP Reverb G2. And please remember to subscribe to the channel for the latest Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 content, and do smash that like button as it really helps boost the channel and reach other simmers. So now we'll take a look at my best VR settings. I'm currently using Windows 10 Pro version 2.1 H1. I have game mode switched off and hardware accelerated GPU scheduling or HAGS for short is now turned on and variable refresh rate is turned off. I am getting slightly better performance since the latest driver was installed and that driver is version 5.11.23. Here are my NVIDIA 3D settings this is the global settings. The reason why I'm showing you this is because image scaling is now turned off because I am using the OpenXR toolkit, which upscales the image and we can sharpen it to using either the NIS or the FSR modes, which I explain in the video above. And here are my Microsoft Flight Simulator program settings. You can see that most of the top menu is set to the global, either off or on, depending on the global setting. So you can just go through them and look at what I've got set there. The next screenshot shows I've got the max frame rate off. I've actually stopped capping the frame rate. This is mainly due to the fact that I'm getting really, really solid and smooth performance. However, if I'm flying around cities or with more complex aircraft, I tend to cap my frames at 34 now. So basically it depends on how it performs. If I start the sim up with uncapped frame rate and I start noticing stuttering, I just quickly clip it to 34. Again, like I said, this is mainly around cities with larger aircraft, but generally I have this uncapped now. My power management mode is set to prefer maximum performance, so I'm going for performance here. And you can see the texture filtering is on. All the texture filtering is turned on and at high performance. Threaded optimization is off, vertical sync is on, and virtual reality pre-rendered frames is set to two. These are my best NVIDIA settings, and they are helping me to get that smooth experience, especially with this new driver. I highly recommend updating your driver to version 511.23. Next, we have the Windows Mixed Reality settings, and here we're looking at the headset display. I let Windows decide to adjust the level of detail and quality of effects in the Mixed Reality Home, because I don't really use that much. The Change Window App Resolution is set to 1080p. As far as choosing to optimize for performance, I let Windows decide that. The resolution is set to best quality, which is 4320 by 2160 pixels. The frame rate is set to 90 hertz. The calibration is set to 60 millimeters, which is default. And I have the sleep time out for 15 minutes. So when I want to take a break, I can just put the headset down and it won't turn itself off until that time. Here we have my OpenXR developer tool settings. You can see I'm using runtime version 109.2111.23003. And you can also see here by looking at the API layers, you can see that I am using the new OpenXR toolkit companion app. 
Here you can see my developer settings. I am using the latest preview OpenXR runtime with custom render scale at 100%. The reason for this is because I'm using the OpenXR Toolkit companion app, which requires you to set this to 100. It's really important you do that if you're using that scaling tool. Motion reprojection is disabled. I always use it disabled. I just simply cannot stand the artifacts and blurriness that they get when it's enabled. And here you can see my OpenXR Toolkit companion app settings. You can see here that I'm using the FSR upscaling option with a factor of 80%, which is 2,524 by 2,470 pixels. The sharpness is set at 60. I don't get much shimmering with these settings. In combination with the rest of the settings, it seems to work fine for me. There's obviously some slight shimmering, but that's just to be expected with the anti-aliasing. I have the world scale set at 100, the prediction dampening of not touched, so that's at 0%. I was using the NIS upscaler at the same settings before, and it's still good, but I do find the FSR gives me slightly more frames, and I do prefer it. In terms of clarity and smoothness though, this is pretty much the game-changing tool, and I highly recommend that you try it out, guys, with your systems, because it really does help the system run better using VR. Again, I'm getting slight shimmers, but not much at all. It's the best I can get, and I am enjoying that clarity and sharpness this gives. Highly recommend it, guys. Next, we move on to the VR settings in Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. You can see I've got the render scaling set to 100. This is because I'm upscaling with the OpenXR toolkit. The anti-aliasing is set to TAA. Terrain level of detail is set to 100. This gives me a great amount of detail and still doesn't sacrifice any frames. Off-screen terrain pre-caching is set to ultra. Terrain vector data is set to high. Buildings, trees, grass and bushes are all set to medium. Objects level of detail is set to 100. Volumetric cloud is set to high. Texture resolution is set to ultra. Anisotropic filtering is set to eight times. Texture supersampling is set to eight times eight. Texture synthesis is set to high. Water waves are set to high. Shadow maps are set to 1024. Terrain shadows are set at 512. Contact shadows at high. Windshield effects at medium. Ambient occlusion is low. This is a big hitter in terms of performance, therefore I turn it on low. Cube back reflections are set to 192. Ray march reflections are at high. Light shafts are at low. Bloom is off and glass cockpit refresh rate is set to high because I'd like to see those dials in real time. And those are my best VR settings using the HP Reverb G2 along with the new and improved OpenXR Toolkit companion app. Have a go with it and see what you prefer and hopefully you'll soon be getting the most out of VR in Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. I will do another settings video after the next big sim update but until then these are set so I can forget and just go and fly. And be sure to check out my video looking at the new OpenXR Toolkit companion app which is simply awesome. Thanks for your support, and do let me know if you've got any questions about your own settings in the comment section below. As always, I hope you find this content useful, and I look forward to making the next video soon. And in the meantime, as always, take care, and stay safe.